So I made this video because I recently received a comment from one of my viewers and the comment came from a gentleman, his name was Alan, and he asked the question, how did you rework after Stringify shut down? What he was referring to is my video titled Automated Garage Door with Smart Things and Stringify. And to answer his question, I basically said, you know, I've been looking for a solution, haven't found one, when I do, I'll, I'll probably post a video. So this is in response to his comment. I did find what I consider a workable solution. The name of that app is Sharp Tools. Sharp Tools is a web-based application. It comes with a dashboard and also a rule engine. And I think with the rule engine, I can easily replicate what I did in Stringify. And we're gonna talk about that next. Okay, so the video that Alan was referring to is garage door automation using two Z-Wave smart switches. That's what the title slide looks like. And I use a momentary switch and I also use a tilt sensor in the garage door. And in this video, I tell about those two Z-Wave devices. And uh, I also explain how I created a Stringify flow uh, to automate the garage door opener and uh, the two uh, fixtures that I use I, I get into a lot of detail in that particular video and explain uh, what what the devices are and where do you find them and how do you set them up um, so if you need detail on that I definitely recommend that video but in, in addition to these two smart devices obviously you need smart things you need a smart things hub to control them and in addition to that, you need to have your iPhones or you can purchase SmartThings present sensors, but you have to have a way for the SmartThings hub to be able to detect your presence or lack thereof. Uh, so those are the smart devices you need to do this. Uh, if you have those, uh, or if you want to set up uh, your, your smartphone as a present sensor, I also have an additional video on that. I'll put the uh, title slide up here so that you can see that. And I'll also put links in the descriptions for uh, these videos on the garage door that I'm referring to. Uh, so if you need to do any of that setup, there's a lot of information on my channel in order to help you do that. Uh, once you get your smart devices in place, the two Z-Wave uh, garage door controllers, and you get your iPhone set up as present sensors, uh, then you're ready to uh, put into place this solution that I've found. The application that I discovered is Sharp Tools, and Sharp Tools helps you visualize and automate your smart home and uh, there is a dashboard feature and that dashboard feature allows you to create tiles that are dynamic meaning that you can click on them to cause lights to go on and and automations to start uh, those automations are created in this rule engine and the rule engine is a very nice feature that allows you to create different flows that accomplish the automations uh, works with smart things as you see here and uh, the nice thing about it is that you can do these automations unlimited with the free version. Uh, as you see here, it states unlimited smart home hub connections, unlimited device connections. That means if you have 40 devices, you can connect them all and you can use those 40 devices in unlimited rule engine automations. So the free version only limits you by restricting you to one dashboard and 15 tiles total. There's also some other limitations, as you can see here. Uh, but if it's something you like and you want to have unlimited access on all those features, uh, it's a reasonable price at only $30 a year. So something definitely to check out. Okay, so I went ahead and logged into my dashboard. And there is a couple things that I want to show you in here. You can easily add your devices if you've ever worked with in any third-party application. It's just, just a matter of signing into your SmartThings account and then selecting the devices that you want to add to the application. And then the other thing you'll want to do is, in addition to adding your SmartThings, if you're going to use it to control things uh, that 
are dependent on the location of your phone you'll need to also add your phone to the setup as well uh, at that point uh, you can go into the rule engine and use your phone within those applications as well but I want to show you quickly the dashboard here I've set up a, a bit of a dashboard here it's not very organized at this point but it's easy to lay out you just select the devices that you want to add to the dashboard and then you can easily move tiles around to organize them in the fashion that you want so that everything's pretty structured and then once you get the layout that you desire uh, you can then just save that um, delete excess tiles sure we'll delete those and then everything is laid out nicely and then these are dynamic as I said previously uh, this is my family room wall lights if I click on this they automatically turn on and turn back off that easy uh, you can also add your routines in here and control your routines as well the, the exciting feature for me is the rules engine as I mentioned uh, this is pretty versatile it allows you to use uh, if-then situations it's pretty straightforward so I want to get into this and show you how I set up this open garage on arrival routine but before I do that just want to give a shout out to Alan and uh, thank him for prompting me to kind of seek for a solution and it was because of him that I think I came up with something now to be able to reestablish the automation that I had previously so thanks to you Alan let's go ahead and get into how you set this up and get into that right now since I already have this set up I think it'd be best if I show you how to create a rule step by step so that's what I intend to do we're gonna call this uh, open garage on arrival and we'll make make that two I'm gonna put in the description I just copied and paste that opens garage door on my arrival assuming that the tilt sensor shows that the door is closed uh, the trigger of course is going to be my iPhone so I'm gonna go to device and I'm gonna select iPhone bud and what we're looking for the attribute of presence and I want it to changes to so when it my iPhone presence changes to present that's the trigger so this basically tells the program so whenever the iPhone enters the geofence that's your trigger to actuate the flow so let's go ahead and work on the flow then so uh, the flow is going to be a condition and the condition is to check on that sensor to determine if the door is open or closed because I don't want to execute this if the door is already open so uh, I'm going to choose the device and this is going to be my garage tilt sensor so if you haven't watched that previous video you will see that I have two devices on my garage door one device is a momentary switch and that acts as a press button that turns the door on and off but it just pushes the button on and then immediately resets it to off so you'll want to have a switch set up as a momentary switch and then the tilt sensor determines whether the door is open or closed so now I've selected my garage tilt sensor the next thing you want to do is choose an attribute so I want to check to see if there's uh, a contact attribute and the option that I'm looking for I want to see if it is and I'm going to check uh, closed so this looks at the garage sensor looks at the contact switch uh, and checks to see if the switch is closed so we're gonna go ahead and save that now as you can see here you can add additional uh, conditions so this is pretty versatile you can add a number of conditions uh, rather than select uh, if uh, then or else I'm gonna go ahead and select an action so you would select 
then and else if you were going to say, if the sensor is closed, do this. If it's not closed, do that. Uh, I only need one action, so that's why I jump down to the action. I'm going to select the device. My device is going to be the garage door uh, opener. Again, this is the momentary switch. And what I want to do is I want to push it, push the button. Uh, so I'm not turning it on or not turning it off. I'm, I'm using the push because it's a momentary switch. And that's it. Uh, we save that and then save the whole routine. And it's set to go. Now you can go in here, uh, you can disable this. Uh, you can enable it on that menu. Uh, you can also, as I mentioned, add these rules onto your dashboard. Uh, so if we go back to the dashboard and we look in here and we want to edit and if we want to add new things this would be under rules and you see my two rules here the one that I already had and the one that I added so let's put this rule in here so open garage door and arrival if you want to test this you save your dashboard and then you can just click on this button and the garage door should be opening right now you notice this is on that means it worked so the switch turned on it turned back off now let's find our sensor tilt sensor says it's open so if I hit the uh, garage door opener again manually you can see this tilt sensor changed to close and I know my garage door is closed so I'm hitting the opener over here the garage door is opening it should be closing this should change from open to close takes a while for that tilt sensor to once the door's already there it goes so the door is now closed and uh, so it's working like a charm so that's how you can test your routine to see if everything's functioning as it should so that's all there is to it it's a very nice utility and uh, something that I recommend you try if uh, you are used to uh, other applications like Stringify uh, there's there's quite a few out there and you're at a loss for how to get the automation you need if you're not uh, really versed in how creating pistons in the uh, SmartThings IDE then this may be a, a workable solution for you give it a try let me know your thoughts in the comments below let me mention in closing that Sharp Tools can be found at sharptools.io. And uh, if you found today's content helpful, don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. And thanks for watching today. We'll see you next time.